This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on looking For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my, I'll fix my eyes, eyes. Hey Calvary Kids and welcome to Children's Church Online. I am so glad that you could be here with us today. We're going to have a great time as we continue to talk about faith. Now, who can tell me what is the definition of faith that we've been doing? It's a little bit tricky. Remember, faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So trusting what you can't see because of what you can see. It's a little complicated, but it actually makes sense. Trusting what you can't see, something that you just you can't see it, but there are things around you that you can see that help you believe in that specific thing. And of course, that specific thing we're talking about is God. We can't see God, but there are things around us that help us know that God is real. And we're going to continue talking today. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. Remember last week we talked about a guy named Saul, and he ended up in kind of a predicament because by the end of the story last week, he was blind. He couldn't see anything. It's never a good thing. But we're also going to talk a little bit today about fear. So, who can tell me, what are some of the things that you are afraid of? Maybe you're afraid of the dark. Maybe you're afraid of spiders. 
Maybe you're afraid of a teacher or somebody at school. Maybe you're afraid of, I don't know. My biggest fear for me is I am scared of snakes. I can do any other creepy crawly, spiders, centipedes crawling on me, whatever. Don't, doesn't matter. Snakes, uh uh-uh. I don't do the whole snake thing. Snakes is, for me, one of my biggest fears. I am terrified of snakes. And the truth is, we all have things that we're afraid of. But God doesn't want us to be afraid. He wants us to trust in him. And that's what we're going to pick up in our story this week. Now, remember last week, again, we talked about a guy named Saul. And how Saul, he hated Christians. He had heard all about Jesus. He knew about all the, the things that were written about Jesus in the Old Testament. He'd seen the, he'd seen the disciples. He hadn't seen Jesus himself, but he'd seen the disciples. He heard about Jesus, and he just chose not to believe. He didn't want to believe. And so he decided, you know what, I'm going to throw all these Christians, all these people that believe in Jesus, I'm going to throw them in prison. And he did that in Jerusalem, and then he went to another town called Damascus, and he wanted to do the exact same thing. But God met him on the road to Damascus. A bright light shone from heaven, and Jesus appeared to him and said, Saul, why are you doing this? Here I am. I'm real. Believe in me now. And when Saul got up from the ground, his eyes, the light had blinded him. He opened his eyes and he couldn't see a thing. And for three days, Saul couldn't see anything. Can you imagine what that was like? Can you imagine opening your eyes and just not seeing anything? It's just a bunch of black. And you can't see anything for three whole days. But after those three days, God did something really cool. In Acts chapter 9, verse 10, it says this. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, here I am, Lord, he replied, get up and go to the street called Straight, the Lord said to him, to the house of, uh, excuse me, to the house of Judas and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, since he is praying there. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in, placing his hands on him so that he may regain his sight. So God appears to Ananias and basically tells him, Ananias, I want you to go to Saul And I want you to place your hands on him, and then he will receive his sight again. Now, what do you think Ananias thought of this? Actually, the Bible tells us Ananias was kind of freaked out. Because the truth is, he'd heard about this guy named Saul. He'd heard about Saul, how he was throwing people into prison, how he hated Jesus. And Ananias was like, God, you sure? You sure this is what you want me to do? I mean, think about it. If Saul didn't still, let's say he gained his sight back and he didn't believe in Jesus, he could take Ananias and just throw him right into prison. Be kind of like, I've got a little friend up here with me today. This is my, uh, my alligator crocodile. I don't know which one. I'm going to call it a crocodile. All right? So this is my little crocodile for the day. Now, if this was a real crocodile... And I told you, I want you to go up and pet this crocodile. How many of you would be in favor of doing that if it was a real crocodile? Probably not the smartest thing to do. Because what's, what's this crocodile going to do when you try to pet him? He's probably going to latch onto your finger and not let go. In fact, a real crocodile, he's probably going to latch onto your entire hand and not let go. That's probably kind of what Ananias thought God was telling him to do. It's like, you want me to go to the guy who hates Christians the most, and I'm a Christian, 
and you want me to go to his house and, and place my hands on him so he could see again. He probably thought, man, I am in big trouble. Saul is going to get his sight back and he's going to be so mad. He's going to take me and throw me right in prison. Same with this crocodile. If you pet him, he's going to bite. It's like, if I go to Saul, he's going to bite. He's going to get me. But you know what? Even though Ananias was afraid, he had faith that God was going to take care of him. That was, God was telling him to do this. It was going to be okay. So what did Ananias do? Ananias, he trusted in God. He had faith. He went to the house that Saul was staying at. He came in. He laid his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, in the name of Jesus Christ, who appeared to you on the road to Damascus, receive your sight. And when he took his hands away from Saul's eyes, these fish-like scales fell off of Saul's eyes. And he opened his eyes, and all of a sudden, he could see again. Now, what do you think Saul did? Do you think he got angry? Do you think he took Ananias and threw him in prison? No, he didn't. Saul was so happy, so excited that, one, he could see again, but two, he had seen Jesus. He knew that Jesus was real. He knew that Jesus was God's son. And he believed for the first time in his life, he believed. And you know what he did? He asked Ananias, say, Ananias, I believe in Jesus. I want to be baptized. And there was a pool of water there in the house. And he said, let's just do it right now. I want to be baptized. And so right there, Ananias baptized Saul. And Saul became a believer in Jesus. You know what Saul did? Saul began going around telling everybody, look, I saw Jesus. Everything Jesus' friends, the disciples have been saying about him, it's true. Jesus is God's son. He believed. And he began going out telling everybody he could. But there was one problem. All the people who liked what Saul was doing, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who put Jesus to death and then were happy because Saul had come to them and basically said, I want to throw all these Christians into prison. They were mad. They were like, we had this guy on our side, now he switched sides. And now he's leading more people to, to, to believe in Jesus. You so know what? They came up with this idea. They said, we're going to kill him. They blocked all the exits to the city. And they basically said, we're going to come to his house and we're, going to, and we're going to throw him in prison and we're going to get him killed. Because we're just tired of this guy. Because Saul was just so loudly proclaiming, Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. That they were just like, you know what? We're done with this guy. Now the good news is, another Christian heard about this plot that they were going to try to kill Saul. So they found out about this in advance. And so they got together and they prayed to try to figure out a way out of this, some way to save Saul's life. Because remember, all the gates are sealed. There's no way out of the city and they're coming for him. You think maybe then Saul was a little scared? You think maybe he was a little bit nervous that, you know, people are coming to kill me and there seems to be no way out. But you know what? Saul still had faith in God. This time he chose to have faith. Even though he couldn't see God, he still chose to have faith and believe that Jesus was going to take care of him. And you know what? After praying, they came up with this idea. They got this big basket, like a big laundry basket or something, and he said, all right, so they're guarding the gates to get outside the city, but nobody's guarding the walls. And so they took this basket, and Saul got in the basket, and a bunch of the Christians lowered Saul over the wall. 
So they lowered the basket all the way down to the bottom of the wall. And that way Saul was outside the city and he could escape and go somewhere else. You think Saul might have been a little nervous as they're lowering him down? It was probably a long way down. And I'm in the little basket. (laughs) But you know what? God took care of Saul. Even though he was scared, even though he was afraid, he had faith that God would take care of him. And you know what? Even when you're afraid, even when you have fears, God's going to take care of you. You can have faith. If he took care of Ananias, he took care of Saul, he will take care of you. Even when you're afraid, even when you're scared, God is always there for you. Even though you can't see him, you can know that he is there for you. He will take care of you. So here's what I want to challenge you guys with today. Whatever you're afraid of, trust in God. If there's something that you've been afraid to do or maybe just being afraid at night of the dark, it's okay to be afraid. But know that God is going to be there to take care of you. So I want to challenge you guys, whatever you're afraid of, trust that God will take care of you. All right? Now, before we go, we've got our memory verse for the month. And it's found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And it says this, Now, faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. Hebrews 11, 1. We're going to say that together on three. Ready? One, two, three. Now, faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. Hebrews 11, 1. All right, we're going to continue to work on that. We're going to continue to talk about Saul. And next week, we're going to talk about a time not only when Saul changes his name to a guy named Paul, which is an interesting story, we're also going to talk about a time where he did end up in prison. But because of his faith in God, he was able to get out in a really cool way. All right? Now, before we go, I've also got one thing for your parents and one thing for you guys. All right, so if your parents aren't watching the video or in the room right now, pause it, go get them real quick. This is for our parents. We have a brand new app that we're using here at Calvary Baptist Church, and it's called Parent Q. It's a free app that you can download on your phone, and what this does is it gives you guys as parents uh, materials and resources that you can use throughout the week. So you'll see things like videos about the lesson that we just, that we just heard. You'll see things like our uh, monthly memory verse, questions that you as parents should be thinking about during the week, and then um, just spiritual activities that you can do with your kids, um, devotions that you can do with your kids throughout the week. We want to make this resource available. It all coincides with the lesson that your kids learn this week. There's also different blogs on just about every topic under the sun when it comes to parenting, um, along with podcasts with a similar thing, just about anything you can imagine. It's a great app, and it's just a great tool and a great resource for you guys as parents to use to help you guys be the spiritual leaders of your home. So I want to encourage you guys, go ahead, download that app, and sign up. It's all ready to go. And we would love for you guys to go ahead and start using it because it's going to be just such a valuable tool for you as parents. Now, Calvary Kids, here is the big announcement for you guys. Our next summer adventure is going to be Calvary Kids Tournament. So we're going to be playing all kinds of different games that night. We'll be doing things like three-legged races. We'll be doing dodgeball. We're going to split you guys up into two teams and see who can win the very first Calvary Kids Tournament. It's going to be a great time, and you're not going to want to miss out. It's going to be a ton of fun. And the following Wednesday night, this is for all of our families Here at Calvary, we are going to have a special family and fireworks picnic. It's going to be a great time. We're going to be grilling hot dogs. We're going to be shooting fireworks and just uh, just having a great time together as as families celebrating the 4th of July. So you're not going to want to miss out on that either, and that's for everybody. So next Wednesday, it'll be our Calvary Kids Tournament. The following Wednesday will be our family and fireworks picnic on July the 1st. You're not going to want to miss out on any of those events, so make sure you're there.
I know you guys had such a great time at Messy Game Night, and we're going to be doing stuff like this throughout the entire summer, so be looking forward to what next week adventure is going to be. Hope you guys have a fantastic week. We look forward to seeing you here on Wednesday and on Sunday mornings. Again, hope you guys have a great week. We love you guys and just can't wait to see you soon.